In this short video, let's talk a bit about Irish drama. I want to cover some Irish contributions to the English theater. We'll talk a bit about the stage Irishman and the baggage behind the representation of Irish characters on the stage. We'll do a little bit of geography lesson. I want to talk about class and culture, and I want to talk about Irish modernism and uh, Irish modern literature. Okay, so Irish contributions to the English theater. Well, Richard Sheridan was a producer and a playwright and a politician, a theater owner. Um, he wrote uh, plays called School for Scandal and the Rivals. These were high farce. He spent a lot of time focusing on poking fun at the foibles and flaws and weaknesses of the aristocracy. Uh, and he, he died in poverty, so he was not himself a member of that aristocracy. Oscar Wilde is another Irish uh, a dramatist. Uh, he was a poet, a critic. Uh, if he had an Instagram account, he'd have been awesome. He wrote short, witty things, and you know he was a, a, a he went on lecture tours. He was quite a celebrity in his day. Uh, most famous for writing *The Importance of Being Earnest*. He also wrote the novel *Picture of Dorian Gray*. And we would describe his plays as witty social comedies. Again, focusing on the foibles and weaknesses of the upper class. Uh, George Bernard Shaw was another Irish dramatist who made a huge success on the English stage. He was an, a music critic and a theater critic, and he was a polemicist. Uh, he was uh, against organized religion, and he was vehemently against vaccination. Uh, he wanted to, to reform spelling in America, uh, or in, in the English language, rather. Um, so anyway, he was a uh, uh, quite a, a divisive character. He wrote about 60 plays. Uh, including Pygmalion, which is the basis for the musical My Fair Lady. He wrote a play on um, Joan of Arc called St. Joan. And in English literature, he's really considered second only to Shakespeare in terms of dramatic talent. And um, Samuel Beckett was another Irish-born playwright. Uh, he was an absurdist. He was a director. He was a translator. He spent most of his life in Paris, actually. Um, among his plays were Waiting for Godot and The Endgame. And one of his short plays called Not I, uh, he's described as um, uh, the play takes place with a, a simply a disembodied mouth in the center of a stage. And I saw a production of it recently that just had a, a video camera pointing at the actress's mouth. And that was all that you saw. Anyway, uh, he was experimental and quite unusual. Now, all of these playwrights succeeded as dramatists on the the London stage, and again, Samuel Beckett was bilingual. He wrote in, in English and French for, for most of his life, uh, so he also has successes in French. But there, unless you knew about the background of these characters, you really wouldn't know much about their Irish identity or their Irish origins. Um, the uh, representation of Ireland in in uh, English literature, anyway. Well, let's let's hear some. Uh, political cartoons, we can see this is a, a representation of a stock Irishman on the left. He's got a bottle of rum, he's sitting on a keg of gunpowder, and he's really sort of animalistic looking. Uh, on the right, we have a little, little bit of verse. Uh, As we've dared to call the monkeys in the zoo by Irish names, Aaron's sons in wrath declare us snobs and flunkies, and demand that we withdraw them. Nor should we ignore their claims, for it's really very hard upon the monkeys. So this idea that the Irish um, people are animalistic and less than human and, and worthy of mocking was uh, uh, an important uh, background. I mean, these are these are um, uh, these illustrations suggest the uh, the contempt that the Irish were held uh, by mainstream. Uh, English society. We'll talk about those differences in, in, in a minute when we get to the geography. Uh, here is a um, uh, nurse wanted, middle-aged woman capable of taking care of two small children. No Irish need apply. Uh, that, uh, that was from a, um, uh, an American uh, paper. And here we have in 2012, uh, the Australian embassy blasts racist advert asking no Irish to apply for a bricklaying job. Uh, you can see a um, uh, 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 bricklayer needed start ASAP, 250 a week, no part-time workers, and ca all caps, no Irish. So we see a, a, a very long um, 
uh, history of uh, the Irish being uh, seen as uh, laughable. And um, in popular culture through much of the 20th century and even into the 21st century, uh, we have the stereotype of the stage Irish character. Uh, and uh, Lucius O'Trigger in The Rivals is a good example of that. But you might be more familiar with the leprechaun from Frosted Lucky Charms. Um, his characters are superstitious and they crave instant gratification and they're blustery and they're childish and they're cowardly. And uh, they're easily manipulated. You, know, you just need to figure out what triggers will set them off. They're single-minded. Now, they can be loyal and they can be a positive character. And you might not have thought about this, uh, but Shaggy from the Scooby-Doo series is, uh, he's got red hair. Uh, even the name Shaggy suggests um, uh, one of the stereotypes that Irish were not clean shaven and clean cut. Uh, uh, so anyway, I'm not going to go too much in, into details about whether, whether Shaggy really is a stage Irishman. But there he is wearing the green shirt and red hair, and he's got a lot of characteristics. Um, just think... Uh, uh, think of the um, uh, the way Shaggy can lose his cool and bluster and try to try to keep himself under cool, uh, but he's also easily manipulated and he's a comic character. He's not the hero. Anyway, um, okay, geography lesson. If you see this off the coast of Europe and you call it England, okay, well, you're right about the bigger of those two islands, partly. And if you call the little island to the left there, Ireland, well, you're partly right. Um, the United Kingdom is short for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Great Britain is that big island to the right. Northern Ireland is that chunk out of, or Nor Northern Ireland is the chunk out of the smaller Ireland. And uh, uh, the partitioning of Ireland, uh, this border was formed in the 1920s, and you see in that north uh, east section, Northern Ireland. Uh, the Northern Irish are, uh, many of them are descendants of colonizers from England. And uh, England was Protestant at the time of the, of the colonization, and they were more wealthy. I mean, they took the wealthiest uh, property f uh, for themselves and, and basically enslaved the Irish serfs. Um, the Republic of Ireland, which is the rest of that island, uh, it has more Catholic tradition, and there's more poverty in that area. And uh, for uh, decades in the 20th century, the rivalry between these two groups uh, before this border was formed, and even in the years after the border was formed, there was, um, you know, gang fights and, and youth uh, battles and, and terrorist attacks and church bombings. And uh, anyway, the, the Irish refer to this as the Troubles. And the Troubles going on in, in, in Ireland uh, caused in no small part by the remnants of uh, English colonizers in this island. And those colonizers, by the colonizers, may have been there for hundreds of years, and they themselves set down roots. And those colonists may feel just as much loyalty to um, the little island of Ireland as they do to their cultural her heritage in England. So it, it's a complex situation when you have colonizers who's, who's been there for for hundreds of years. Um, uh, in high school, you may have read Jonathan Swift's uh, "A Modest Proposal." which was, uh, it's usually given as, as an example of, of satire in which he pr demonstrates that there's a lot of starvation in Ireland and the people don't have enough food and the people keep reproducing. We don't know what to do with them. And Swift, in order to mock mainland England's uh, disinterest in the troubles of the uh, poor people in Ireland, um, uh, he says, well, um, uh, uh, babies are actually very tasty. Irish babies are really uh, quite a delicacy, and maybe we can solve the problem by eating babies. Anyway, um, Swift's point is that England, uh, in his mind, uh, didn't care about the plight of the poor Irish. Anyway, so that's part of the culture in which uh, Irish literature and Irish drama exists. Um, in Shakespeare and Chekhov, we do see lower class characters, but the lower class characters usually flesh out the aristocratic world. And Sheridan and Wilde and Shaw, these are Irish born playwrights who got their successes in London. Uh, they wrote a lot of social comedies and they're poking fun at the, the, the polish and the surface level um, uh, shallowness 
of the uh, aristocracy, but those comedies are from the aristocrats' point of view uh, because these Irish playwrights were making plays that would appeal to the dominant wealthy audience, which included the, uh, the English Protestant aristocrats. Uh, as a, as a, a really rough parallel, think of American culture of the 1920s and the 1930s. You have um, African-American music, ragtime and jazz, which is kind of repackaged and sanitized as swing for whites. So you have um, a, 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 a different use of the same market or the same kind of music for, for a different market. Uh, whereas uh, rap music and hip hop music, that's black artists performing for the black community about the issues that the black community cares about. And if you're interested in that music a a as a white person who is curious about it or is drawn to it or appreciates the language, great. But the primary audience for that, that music is the uh, black community uh, from which the artists arrive. Well, uh, modern Irish lit is similar. It's Irish authors writing about the concerns and problems and the interests of the Irish community. And in that case, the lower class characters are front and center. They're not comic relief. They're not there to uh, flesh out the problems that the aristocrats are focusing. They are the ones going through the troubles and the, uh, uh, the plot points, and we're following their journey through the uh, literary work. A, a, um, a, a real pioneer in this situation is James Joyce, who is a short story author and a novelist rather than a playwright. Uh, his collection of short stories, The Dubliners, he wrote the experimental novel Finnegan's Wake. And uh, he did not sanitize the dark parts of his upbringing, uh, unlike those previous uh, Irish dramatists who wrote uh, polished, funny, witty comedies that upper class audiences would approve of. Um, uh, Joyce is writing stories about a young person who is pressured by a small town and maybe crushed and maybe escapes that small town and gets an education and is haunted by the past and maybe returns to the past, perhaps metaphorically or perhaps literally comes back to the childhood locations. And um, in that situation, the themes of poverty and alcoholism and violence and class oppression and ignorance and, and this sort of flawed humanity, how we are damaged by all these parts of our environment, and maybe how our humanity allows us to keep going despite all the damage, uh, those are some tropes uh, that I think are popular in modern Irish literature. Whereas again, Sheridan Wilde and Shaw were among the Irish-born dramatists who mocked the reserve and the polish and the shallowness of the British aristocracy, and they milked that for humor and also biting social commentary. But modern Irish literature uh, written by Irish for local Irish audiences is kind of the mirror image. Uh, characters in modern Irish literature have no filter. They say whatever they think or feel, and boy, do they feel strongly. Uh, starting a fist fight over politics at your arch enemy's wake. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, uh, taking no charity and, and, and knowing the moment to recite a perfect poem. Uh, celebrating in the earthly pleasures of, of, you know, a food from your garden or looking at a sunrise or looking at hard work that you've done or looking at the beauty of somebody who attracts you. These are things that the Irish characters would celebrate. Uh, the musical quality of their voice and giving speeches. Uh, 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 telling the story years later of that epic time when you started a brawl at your rival's wake and you're drunk while you're saying this and you're exaggerating it. Everybody knows you're exaggerating, but it's a great story. Uh, debasing yourself, doing hard labor, uh, serving in somebody else's house or working hard so that your children won't have to debase themselves. Um, uh, and of course, the alcoholism and the poverty and the violence and the suffering, but it's also the, the self-education and the endurance and the humanity and, and the family connections that, um, uh, that, per, that persist, that endure despite all the difficulties and despite all the pain and suffering. Um, that's part of the human nature too. That's part of the human element. Okay, so that's a, a very, very quick, very surface level introduction to Irish drama. Just to get you a sense of how the um, Irishness of modern Irish plays differs from anything that you might have read if you're thinking of uh, Oscar Wilde or George Bernard Shaw or uh, Sheridan. 
as Irish dramatists. Of course, these elements were there, but um, uh, these elements of the, the earthy working class characters um, uh, are uh, front and center in modern Irish drama. And I hope that you can enjoy that and appreciate that uh, as you uh, continue your journey through literature.